Hey everybody, it's Mr. G. Um, it is a beautiful day. It's gonna be like almost 85 degrees today, which is amazing. So I decided I'm gonna do this outside because I love being outside and I'd rather be outside than in a little cooped up office. So I hope you are able to spend some time out um, outside as well. So uh, last time we discussed, let me look back here, fr managing frustration um and anxiety today we're gonna talk about resisting revenge um revenge is like when something happens you plot and you plan on how to get back at someone um revenge can be a kind of a natural feeling like there's like a feeling of karma and everything needs to be kind of leveled out and if something happens to you you need to be able to do it to them and unfortunately, when you're in school or someplace public or anywhere, usually, um, revenge is usually frowned upon because it's a, usually an act of violence or it's acting out and can be dangerous. So we want to resist revenge. And so we're going to work through some steps today about how to resist revenge. And we're, we're going to practice what that looks like, not exacting revenge. So uh, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna play our Calm Down song. So what I want you to do is when you're watching that song today, I want you to focus on um, when you follow the steps, what happens. And it's, it forces you to kind of calm down and think about what you're doing. So when you stop, name your feeling, calm down, it actually has an effect on it, makes you slow down. So I'm going to share my handy dandy screen here. All right. So again, I'm going to minimize my screen so you guys can watch. Again, I want you to listen with attention for what the words say happens when you name your feeling. And it's you slow down and make you think about, it. okay, let's see. It's astounding. How intense is this feeling? Anger is building up. You need some healing. But listen closely. There's a way to do it. Feel the power. Keep control. Work on through it. Stand alone with why you need your reactions. You gotta get your own attention. Emotions come calling. Instead of just falling to brawling. Name your feel and calm down. Stop. Name your feel and calm down. Stop. Give yourself a signal like stop. Chill. Hold up. Hang on. Send a signal to yourself and stop. Okay. Now name your feeling. Are you angry? Embarrassed? Worried? Scared? Figure it out and name it. And then you start to come right down by just breathing, using self talk or counting. And a one, two, three. Stop. Name your feeling, calm down. Stop. Name your feeling, calm down.
your feeling, calm down. Stop, name your feeling, calm down. Stop, name your feeling, calm down. All right, so I don't know if you love that song yet, but you're, you're going to by the time we're done with it. So um, when he said, when you name your feeling, as you said, it slows you down and makes you think. And when we're dealing with revenge, that's kind of what we're going to think about today, because usually it's when something happens, uh, you feel very upset and you have a real immediate feeling and emotion. And it's important to make yourself kind of stop because you, you don't want to act on that emotion. If you just feel something and act on it before you have a chance to think about it, that's that feeling part of your brain taking over. And, you know, it's, you could get you in trouble. And the one thing we want to do is we avoid is you getting in trouble by acting out. So if you take a chance and stop when you have a feeling, that will force you to slow down and think about what you're about to do. Um, you know, and it, it may be that you go ahead and just do the thing you're wanting to do, but at least you've thought about it. And that's what we want you to do. We want you to kind of create a void between feeling and acting. And in between there is this right here. Um, that's your thinking about doing something. So uh, you're told you can't go outside or you're told you can't get on the internet. Here's the thing. You have a feeling. Your action here could be you want to act out and get upset. And this in between nonsense here is where you have to think about what you're feeling and think about your decisions you can make. So just we're, we're trying to make you pause and think about something before you act out. Okay. Um, revenge is like I said before, it's almost like a natural supposition where you feel like you want the world to be even. And if something happens to you, you want them to be able to feel what you felt. And we still have to stop and pause before we act on that. OK, um, they can be overwhelming. Honestly, a feeling of revenge can be overwhelming. So I want you to kind of pause and think about them before you act on them. OK, so um, we're going to watch a video about uh, someone that has something happen to them and they want to act out. All right. And hopefully they will avoid that. OK, let's go back to sharing my screen here. Alrighty. All right. So we're going to watch Lucas here. Lucas is going to have a situation with a girl named Jayla. And we're going to see what happens here. Again, um, you may want to act out in revenge, but this is going to be about stopping and thinking about your actions. Let's see. I'm in the school band. We practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Last Thursday, I stood up too quickly and I accidentally knocked over Jayla's music stand. Her sheet music fell all over the floor. Before I could even say anything, Jayla grabbed the music off my stand, tore it in half, and threw it on the floor. I couldn't believe it. I mean, what I did was an accident, and she deliberately destroyed my music. I was so mad. I wanted to tear up her music or, or push her. All right, so how is Lucas feeling? Um, you know, I would say he's feeling angry and frustrated, and why? What made him upset? Right, that Jayla wadded up his sheet music and threw it on the floor because his was an accident. He didn't mean to do it. She acted out, and now he wants, he's angry. You can see how he's, you know, he's about to blow in his face. You can just see it. And he's feeling very angry, and he wants to act out. He said he even said he wants to push her. He wants, he wants to attack her because that's what it is. If you push someone, you're still attacking them. Um, it's not just like you can't just say, oh, I just pushed them. No, you, 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 you attack them. So let's be honest here with our, our actions here. So he wants to attack her and hopefully we'll, we'll get him to calm down and resolve, okay? Um, 
you know, what does he, what do you think can happen if he, if he does that, right? Um, what, what could be the result of his actions if he were to act out them? Um, yeah, I'm sure the teacher would get involved. He'll definitely get in trouble. Um, might start a fight with Jayla. Um, you know, he may lose some friends in the process, okay? So let's use the uh, steps to calm down, the stop, name your feeling, and calm down. Um, so right now he needs to stop. He needs to give himself a signal like, okay, okay, Lucas, calm down. And he needs to then name his emotion. So what emotion is he feeling? He's feeling anger. So he needs to say, you're, I'm angry right now. I'm very mad. I'm very upset at Jayla. And then he needs to calm down. What's a calming down strategy that uh, he could try? He could try counting. He could try yeah, deep breathing. But right then, he's in a confrontation with a classmate. What is the most, what is the easiest thing he can do right then? I've said it multiple times. Every time I talk about this, I say, what's the easiest thing he could do? He could just get away from the situation. He could just walk away from Jayla. That's the easiest thing to do. And if he walks away and she follows him and is continuing to yell at him, he just then has to go find a teacher and get out of the situation. So then he can calm down. Jayla can calm down. And then there's not a big, big to do about it. Okay, so uh, that's some things that he could do. Um, you know, the positive self-talk. He could say, "I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in a fight. I just want this to be over." Right? He could just use some of those self-talk if he wanted to as well. All right. So now, before he exacts his revenge, let's see how he handles it okay let's see what lucas does all right so now we're gonna do video part two all right so let's see if lucas is able to calm down and if he does what calm down strategy he uses i was too mad to stay in the room so i walked out for a minute and counted backwards from 10. While I was outside of the room, I thought I could really get in trouble if I do something to get back at Jayla. Okay, I'm going to calm down and not make a big deal out of this. I guess while I was out of the room, someone told Jayla it had just been an accident. Jayla came up to me and apologized. She gave me her sheet music and taped up the copy she tore and kept that for herself. I guess she expected me to be mad or yell, but I accepted her apology and just said, that's okay, next time, just give me a chance to say it was an accident. All right, so I generally was not sure how that was gonna go down, but I'm really glad that he left the room because it shows that if you do leave the situation, that it gives you time to calm down. And he went out of the room and he used some of that positive self-talk and he just did not want to fight. And because he left the room, it gave a bystander enough time to talk to Jayla and say, hey, that was kind of crazy. It was an accident. And then Jayla used her calming down skills to realize that she made a mistake and then she was able to come out and talk to Lucas. And it was because Lucas disengaged, Lucas got out of the situation, that that gave everyone time to just breathe. If you stay in and continue that, that argument, it just gets higher and higher. But if you disengage, you just flatten it. You just flatten it and then everyone has time to breathe. So I thought that Lucas did a bang up job, really good job at handling that situation um again you can't always leave but if you're able to leave the situation that's the easiest thing to do okay um so now we're gonna do a quick skill practice i'm gonna bring a sheet on the screen and we're gonna read some scenarios out loud together and we're going to uh work on them so let me get this here let's see this right here okay so um, we're going to read and we're going to figure out the calming down steps we can use. All right, so the lunch tray. 
You're walking past a classmate while holding your lunch tray. You accidentally brush up against her. She doesn't like it. She turns around and knocks your lunch out of your hands. You're furious. You start thinking negative things to yourself. Can't believe she did that. She's so mean. You couldn't get back at her. You feel like taking her lunch and throwing it down on the ground. Instead, you decide you need some calming down. So what calm down steps can we use? Because we're very upset. This is a situation that could actually happen in school. So what's a calm down strategy? So we're at that stop, name your feeling, and now we need to calm down. Okay, what can we do? The easiest thing to do is uh, just leave, you know, leave the situation. We could use, uh, we could count, try counting, counting down from like one to 10. We could try counting. We could um, tell them to tell the person it was an accident, say it was an, it was an accident. All right. So I don't have any room there. All right. So what positive self-talk could you use to calm down? Well, we could say we don't want to fight. You know, we don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. Um, I need to talk to an adult. Talk to an adult. Um, you know, it was an accident. You know, it, it, it was an accident. I think talking to an adult is the easiest thing to do at that point. So we could try that. All right, next one, the secret. You told a friend something really personal about your family. You told your friend it was a secret. You then find out that your friend told the secret to half of your class. You feel betrayed. You start thinking negative things to yourself, like he's a jerk. He's always doing things like that, and I'll show him. You feel like telling a secret about him to everyone you know. You feel like screaming in his face. Instead, you decide you need to calm down. So. What common noun steps could we use? Um, so we find that out. Our friend is very upset. So now we need to calm down. So what can we do? Um, we could ask questions. You know, we could say like, well, how did we find out? And kind of just talk through it. We could, what, what else can we do to help calm down? Because we're very upset at here. Um, and we can go, we can lead the situation. That's always good. Leave the situation and think. Okay, that's just two things we could do. Now, positive self-talk can we use to calm down? Um, you know, we could just say, the person is still our friend. The person, he, he's still my friend. He's still my friend. I need to talk to him. To my friend, we need to talk. Um, you know, I don't want to get in trouble. Because that's always a big one. I don't want to get in trouble. Um, I need to think more. I need to think more. Okay. So those are just some of the uh, two options we can do if we get upset. So here real quick. All right. So revenge. Again, revenge can be natural. It can be something we want to do. But we want to use that stop, name your feeling, calm down if we feel like we want to get back at someone. Because we really need to think about how our actions will impact us in our daily lives. It might feel good to get back at someone right away, but there will be consequences for that. And we do not want to get in more trouble. So what I want you to do is think about situations in which using revenge could get in trouble. All right. But well, until then, I want you to be cool. All right. Be safe.